All right. Hey, everybody. Um, we're sitting down with Bray and Oakley today uh, for our Talking Insurance podcast. And today the topic on the table is renter's insurance. So guys, if you guys don't mind, uh, just take a second, introduce yourself, and let's talk insurance. I'm Michael Winter with Bray and Oakley Insurance Agency. I'm Danny Crum. I'm the Vice President of Sales here at Bray and Oakley Insurance. Awesome. I'm Claude Singleton. I'm the manager of Lexington and Richmond offices of Brian Oakley here in Kentucky. Awesome. Great to have you guys. So, Doc, in renter's insurance, who, who needs renter's insurance? That's a good question. And uh, I, I get that quite often. And I tell people all the time that if you think you need renter's insurance, there's a good possibility you probably do. Anyone that is occupying a home that they do not own is eligible for renter's insurance, okay? And it goes deeper than that. So we're thinking, you know, college students away at a dorm, you're renting a home, you're renting an apartment, uh, even possibly, you know, you're older and you maybe you move back in with your, your parents or a relative for some reason, there's a good possibility you could need renter's insurance for that as well. Uh, it just really depends on the primary uh, homeowner's insurance policy, whether it will respond or not. It's a good question. I, also, Danny, the like your landlord or your property management companies uh, that are um, overseeing the um, uh, the apartment buildings or the, uh, the student housing complexes, they usually will require, it's more common now that they will require renter's insurance. So uh, that's just another area that you're going to start seeing a lot of. Yeah, I'll, share something. I'll share something further if I could. Um, it's not just the contents that you're insuring that particularly the management companies are concerned about. It's the liability part of the policy. Right. And in a way, the liability part of the policy can be much more valuable than the contents part. Uh, and we'll, we'll get into more detail, but I'll just share this with you that contents would cover your belongings up to a limit that you determined for fire and theft and other, other things like that, like some type of a claim. And that's so many thousands of assets that you've got. Well, the liability part, if someone sues you because of, uh, of, of a home, home situation, that could be several hundred thousand. And so your liability part of that policy is a, is a critical thing and can be extremely important. Out of nowhere, out of the blue, here's this claim. And uh, that's part of what happens with the renter's policy. You've got this other coverage that can be extremely beneficial for a bad claim that you didn't see coming. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, you're seeing a, a lot of landlords and stuff require their occupants to have renter's insurance now than you used to. Uh, we're seeing it a lot around here in West Virginia and, and most certainly in Lexington. Almost every uh, renter's policy we write in Lexington, they're giving uh, requirements for liability coverage and, and things like that. And one of the largest claims, it's funny, that, that you see when it comes to renter's insurance. So if, you, if you're quoting someone's renter's insurance and you run an MVR, Something I see a lot is water claims, and and why is you know water claims? So the, the, the say if you're in a multiple unit apartment, and the neighbor above you, they leave their faucet on and they leave, and it floods and drips down and ruins your laptop. You're seeing a lot of that stuff on the claims when it comes to these apartments and complexes and stuff. Hmm. All right. So what um, as far as contents what what does what does renter's insurance actually cover it you know for a lot of, i always try to explain it like this i mean there's a lot you know a lot of people have like costly electronics i mean you have your iphones your smart watches your ipads uh your laptops uh your clothes your furnitures uh your, your beds mattresses anything like that uh, if you take, like, if you could take the building, turn it upside down, shake it, whatever falls out is your contents. Um, so it's a good idea to um, always take a little bit of an inventory of your of your items. Um, you know, keep a, maybe a video of of them to help if you ever do have a claim. But that's that's what we consider contents. Yeah, and it's a good point too. And a lot of people don't realize how deep and how expensive that can get. When you talk about contents, like Michael said, you take the roof off the home. And this is an analogy we use all the time for our customers when we're trying to explain, okay, what's the difference between a dwelling coverage, 
on a structure and the contents coverage. And like Michael said, you take the roof off, you turn the house upside down, anything that can fall out of contents. Well, when you get to thinking about that, I've had customer claim that's, that's had total losses. You're talking about stuff that towels, rags, silverware, furniture, like Michael said, anything not bolted down. And it can really, really get expensive. Most people don't realize what they lost until they lost it. Mm. So when people call me and they're like, how much coverage do I need? Well, that's a good question. You probably need more than what you think you do. And I'll start breaking that down with them. And they'll think, well, I've got, I need $15,000, which is usually the minimum limit that most insurance carriers require on flood insurance. Uh, then I start saying, okay, so do you have a living room suit? Yeah, yeah. All right. Do you have a bedroom suit? Yep, sure do. Dressers, all that good jazz. Uh-huh. How about your silverware? How about your towels? How about your toiletries? Well, I didn't think about all that. Yeah. Yeah, that's stuff that most people don't think about. So usually when it comes to a limit, a loss limit, it's much higher than what most people think they really have. And, and another thing with that coaching, that is the policy limit. Uh, it does not go past that. And so the client determines that amount. And that's what we will put in there for them. We will coach them on, make sure you've done this in your mind, uh, count what you've got. And that's a big deal number. That's a big, big deal number. Pots and pans anymore are extremely expensive, you know? That's the man, brother. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> there we go. Uh, is there stuff that you guys uh, get, I don't know, conversation with your clients that they think is normally covered under uh, renter's insurance and maybe isn't? I'd, I'd like to address that a little bit if I could. There are different kinds of policies that look very similar, and there might be a good thing, might be a good reason to give us a call and let us analyze if you've got a quote with someone it's possible for you to have a lack of coverages on your policy, on your contents policy, your renders policy. It says, I've got a $50,000 limit on my contents, but the quote I give you actually has also says 50,000, but it's got a higher coverage. And why do I say that? Mine has got replacement cost contents on it. it means that we will pay the full price of what it takes today to replace that same like kind and quality item. You had that wooden table that really your parents gave you back 10 years ago. It's a nice wooden table. It's not a, uh, an antique or not a, a priceless heirloom, but it's a functional table. But you said, what's well, 25, 30 years old? It's gonna be depreciated. No, not if you get the right kind of policy. So call us and we'll say, what does it take to rebuild or, re or replace those items? instead of a garage sale price that other companies will actually give you, they'll allow you a lower value, whereas we're going for replacement costs. And that's a big deal, big deal. Awesome. I see, um, I guess with a lot of families at school starting back up, uh, is it important for college students to have renter's insurance? Oh, yeah. yeah, it's, well, I've been doing this for 20 years at least. Um, and one of the things that's important is that we're an independent insurance agency. Uh, we represent at least, you know, 10 quality standard um, insurance carriers. And all the policies language reads differently when it comes to like, um, like temporary housing or property away from the premise. Um, uh, one of our, one of our big carriers is Erie, Erie Insurance Group. And um, with, and the, the jacket language for a like a homeowner's policy is different for Kentucky than it is for West Virginia. So they, they you know, what's covered in West Virginia away from the premise at a temporary residence might not be the same for Kentucky. So one of the things that's really important is that uh, when you, you know, you're getting your insurance is that you actually talk to somebody that's knowledgeable about that. Uh, the big thing is like with Erie, they give you up to 10% of your personal property limit at a, like a, a temporary residents. Uh, so you have up to 10% of your, your mom and dad's contents coverage limit on their homeowners. Um, so, you know, that might be enough. It might not be, but that's, uh, but that's something that you got to look at. Um, so, um, you know, you need, definitely need to review these coverages with your, you know, your advisor at your agency, like, like Claude Singleton in Lexington, Kentucky, he can tell you about the, uh, the, you know, the eerie ja uh, jacket language for a homeowner's policy and how it would protect their students at the dorm or on, on campus living. You, you had a good point there, Michael. And in fact, I was just on the phone with, uh, just before starting this meeting, 
with a family who I've helped with three different daughters <laughs> who went away to college while, and all three of them, we were able to use the parents' homeowner's policy as opposed to a brand new renter's policy. And they said, yeah, but we need a certificate and all that kind of stuff. Yes, we were able to do so. Uh, and it's, it's, if you deal with us, you deal with a knowledgeable agent, uh, we will find the ways. And they had money to, they could have bought a renter's policy, but there was no need to based on the certificates we could provide and real coverage. So it took care of each of the management companies for the, for the girls. And by the way, two have graduated. There's one remaining. <laughs> That's what's going on. Yeah. So, so really depending on the carrier, uh, whether the primary homeowner's policy of the parents will respond or carry over to a rental property or a dorm room for the for the children and even in uh, storage units right Michael didn't you and I look at that one time you know mm -hmm. people renting storage units sometimes a primary homeowner's policy will extend to that provide some coverage mm -hmm. as well awesome so is it uh, I know that you guys cover a couple different states uh, is it is it a law? I know that you had said, Danny, that it looks like some people are starting to require um, renter's insurance before uh, you can rent from them. Yeah, a lot of landlords. Um, again, you're seeing it here more in West Virginia more than you used to. But uh, when we went into Kentucky, you see it all the time, uh, especially some of these big complexes and things like that, where the landlord will actually require you to carry specific limits of liability insurance under a tenant's policy before they'll they'll sign a lease with you. And it's becoming very common here as well. A lot of times the sublimit is going to be $100,000 or $300,000 of liability. And then, of course, it's up to the insured how much contents coverage or personal property coverage they want to carry on their belongings. Awesome. But something else, too, that, and since we're talking about it, too, is uh, that a lot of people don't think about, and I think Claude and I ran into this question before, is loss of use when it comes to a renter's policy. Remember that? Uh, it was a question we got and uh, from a student, I think, that was renting in Lexington. He was like, hey, what happens if uh, the building I'm in is a total loss, fire loss, or something that is loss of use cover? And what that means is the policy will actually pay to put you up in another residence while that one's being repaired or whatever for a certain amount of time. And some renter's policies do contain that. That's a really good, important coverage as well. It's really important right now with the supply chain issues, with things getting uh, rebuilt, uh, it's taking longer. Uh, so that loss of use limit is um, it's going to be used more now. I mean, yeah. that, that, that's really important. Uh, when you start looking at uh, the renter's policy, it, um, that loss of use wasn't always a, that big of a deal, but now with the supply chain issues and stuff, where how long you're having to wait for uh, building material or just, you know, I mean, I know people has waited over a year for appliances. So um, that that's really important as well. That's an excellent point because we are actually right now, uh, because it's what we do, we are, or when we're looking at policies for our customers, when it comes to renter's policies and even homeowner's policies and auto policies as well, we're trying to give that maximum bundle, the best bundle package that will extend that loss of use or that rental car coverage or things out because of the supply and demand right now. So that's a really good point, Michael. So is there any policy um, online for say college students if they have to burn their couch in Morgantown after the WVU game? <laughs> it may happen tonight. <laughs> after we beat Pitt. Um, <laughs> after we beat Pitt. <laughs> In West Virginia, we exclude uh, fire damage to couches. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> intentional, yeah, intentional game related. <laughs> yeah. hey, That's good. Go Mountaineers. Yeah, the yeah. same thing happens in Lexington, and there's a specific street in town where it all happens. And protect your couches, you know. <laughs> wow. That's what about, uh, I know, um, as far as add-on policies, uh, do, do I need to buy um like if i'm renting do i need to buy flood insurance anything does that is that included together is that something you guys can help with typically i'll answer this if you don't mind typically flood insurance is going to be the responsibility of the building owner okay all right so the person that i'm renting off of the landlord or the owner of the home that i'm occupying but i don't insure the structure typically flood insurance will fall back on them because they're going to you know, that's the, the, the big deal of flood insurance, especially when it comes to the government issued policies covering the structure of the home. Okay. 
one thing about this flood insurance um, I want to hit on. Uh, some there's there's other carriers that are starting to dabble in flood insurance. Um, what they're trying to what they do is they're they're uh, bolting on to like a um, another line of coverage like sewer and drain backup. Yes. Uh, sometimes what they'll do is they'll give you actually a, a sublimit of flood insurance with your like if you have sewer and drain backup coverage on your renter's policy, they you know I think some of them might be able to bolt on uh, some um, flood sublimit coverage for uh, for flood. Um, uh, you can also get a tenant's policy for flood insurance, I think, through the uh, NFIP program. So um, that's important um, uh, to look, you know, if you're in a flood prone area, you, you definitely want to look at getting flood insurance. So uh, it's important and, or ask your, you know, your your trusted advisor, independent agent at Bray and Oakley, a little plug there for us, but uh, <laughs> if they can, uh, you know, endorse their policy to give them some sort of flood coverage. Claude might be able to know. Claude, did you sit in any of those um, uh, new flood coverages that are Erie's offering on some yes. of the homeowners? Yes, and it depends upon the state that you're in. The introduction date is, uh, is a little out from us, but they do have... Uh, Erie's got plans for a much improved over the national flood program. It's a much improved type policy. And what the, the, several companies are doing this, and, and we'll be glad to, to look further into this as you call if, if you want to visit about that with us. But uh, they're looking at how the companies can pattern premiums that will be lower and coverages that are better than the national flood insurance program, because there's certain limits on that program that are uh, pretty rigid, and so they're banking on, excuse me, banking on the fact that they can pick out the right type of coverages at the right places, and perhaps not offer it in all places. But uh, they will do a hopefully a better job for the future. And so I do see that as a as a positive thing in the marketplace. More coverages, more types of coverages, but it's not quite settled yet, not here yet, but it's coming. Yeah. Yeah, Erie uh, here in West Virginia, and there's them a plug as well. Great carrier, but a lot of our other car carriers too are working on adding that flood endorsement to their homeowner's policy. And as of right now here in West Virginia, Erie is doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, depending on what flood zone you're in, uh, you know, but you can actually, if you buy the top level endorsement on the homeowner's policy with sewer and drain backup, they will actually, actually sell you some flood insurance within the homeowner's policy. It's pretty cool. That is good. Yeah. So how does it, how does renter's insurance work, say, a uh, difference between a house and an apartment, or um, I guess, and if you have um, roommates, how does, how does, if I take a policy out on a place that I'm renting and I have roommates, something happens, um, you know, how is that covered? So uh, two different questions, two different angles. Who wants to take that one? Yeah. Yeah. I'll jump in if you like. Sure. Um, roommates may not have coverage depending on the company you're dealing with. It's that's your stuff is your stuff and your protection is your protection. And sorry about your luck, pal. You, <laughs> you did you chose not to take it. I took it because I was planning ahead. Yeah. So they may, the same loss that occurred, they may be without and you would be with. Uh, and so that is a big deal. Uh, yeah. We like to know if there's other roommates uh, whenever possible. It's not always possible because things change um, with, with the people. Uh, but if we know about them, then we will warn them of that and offer them the opportunity to have this, the coverage also because yeah. they've got their own contents, you know, that they brought with them. They may share some things, but um, the policy will cover what it will cover. <laughs> it, right. won't, it won't just be to uh, no one non-related and, and, and all that stuff. Yeah, I think you know, we brought this up early in the conversation. It's, it's such a great idea to document your belongings. Do it with a video, do it with camera, whatever, mm -hmm. put it somewhere where it's safe. Because, you know, if you have a big loss, the carriers, especially in this scenario where you could have multiple roommates, the carrier is going to want to, going to, you know, potentially what, you know, what was yours? Do we have proof? Mm -hmm. And and that's a, always a great idea. And it's a good idea in the home. It's a good idea on any homeowner's occupied policy, whether it's a renter's policy, homeowner's policy. You should always document what you have. Uh, and like I, I said, put it in a safe, a safety deposit box, somewhere where it's safe. These iPhones make it really good because of the cloud service now, you don't lose it, but document what you have. You know, you brought up having roommates. You, that, 
you know, we're insurance agents, so we um, we evaluate risk and we're, you know, so, you know, you got three boys in a, uh, you know, sharing a, a house, uh, the likelihood of, of a, you know, something happening to like they maybe have a, um, let's say someone come in to the home that, you know, that you don't know and that person could, or they could have a party and that person steals your stuff. Uh, there's a theft, uh, there's a, you know, increase of theft there. That's why it's more important. That's why you think about how important it is to have the renter's insurance. Um, the other thing is, let's say you got three, you know, you have roommates there. One falls asleep smoking a cigarette. He's probably not as careful as you are. Mm -hmm. uh, you could have a fire loss. I mean, those are some really good reasons why when your kids go off to college, it's important for them to have, you know, this, this coverage of personal property coverage and liability coverage. You know, a lot of kids, when they go to college, they get a dog. What if this dog bites someone? Yes. You know, that's, it's, uh, you know, there's where some of your liability coverage comes in. Um, so it's really important. You know, so, I mean, so we, we always have a lot of people say, well, how much liability coverage do I need? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we can easily tell them how much property coverage they need. We can tell them to add it up and we can get a coverage for it. But I'm like, well, can you tell me how much someone's going to sue you for it? <laughs> you know, and you, you really can't. So as much as you can afford on the liability side uh, is, you know, is what we generally like to tell our customers because uh, it's really important uh, to carry enough liability limits to protect yourself. Yeah, there, there's two points there that I want to elaborate on. And Michael, I'm going to get you to help me on one of them. Uh, theft, when it comes to a homeowner's policy or a renter's policy, how does that work? Is there sublimits? Uh, there is some sublimits on certain items. I mean, they like firearms. There's, there's usually with some carriers, uh, there's uh, a theft sublimit on firearms and jewelry, unless they're scheduled to the policy. And that's another thing you could do with the renter's policy. It gives you the ability to actually schedule these items at a, um, a you know, an appraised value ahead of time. So that's a, that's another good thing to think about as well. But um, there's a lot of uh, some of the differences. We have ten carriers, and the way they would treat firearms is there's probably different sublimit theft uh, theft of firearms sublimit coverage. That means if somebody comes in, breaks in your home, steals your firearms, some carriers give you up to about ten thousand dollars worth of firearms coverage. Well, um, that's not enough in certain areas for certain insurers because. There's several, you know, I, I'm a gun collector. Uh, I'm sure $10,000 wouldn't be enough for me. So uh, what we try to do is uh, encourage our customers to either look at a carrier that doesn't have theft uh, sublimit for firearms, which um, we actually have one carrier that does that. Yes. I believe it's Safeco, um, uh, which is a very good carrier. Um, so, uh, you know, it's good to review your policy, go over these limits, theft sublimits with them and make sure they have the appropriate coverages. If they're not, we can actually schedule them onto the policy. So that takes care of that. Yeah. Another thing with sublimits and all the deductibles, usually it's $1,000. It can be different. But with uh, certain items, um, very important items, your computer, your smartphone, some of our carriers give a give a $100 deductible on a $1,000 policy, $1,000 deductible policy. Here's a $100 deductible for that kind of item. That's a big deal. Uh, you just save nine hundred dollars by the agent advising you with, with that particular company on a claim that involved you know, your smartphone. And that was that's just awesome. Absolutely, now that's a good talk, point. Yeah, and scheduling. I want to elaborate on when when Claude and Michael are referring to scheduling to your policy. Okay, what that? Oh, so you've got your renter's policy, your homeowner's policy, and Michael mentioned scheduling like a watch or firearms. What you're doing is you're specifically listing that item out with a description, okay? And then you're putting a value on that, you either appraised value, purchase price, whatever it may be. So then you've got the coverage for that, but it also will cover you off premises if it's scheduled. Uh, so if you've got a, a, a nice watch that you've got scheduled on your policy and you go to the lake with some friends, you lose your watch, there's coverage for it. It don't have to be necessarily theft from the home or the premises that you're occupying. That's good. The other thing that Michael talked about was how much liability coverage do you need? And like he said, you know, how much can you afford? But we always like to educate our customers on an umbrella policy as well. And uh, an umbrella policy is an extra uh, limit of coverage that goes over top of your policies. If you're 
uh, policy limits or exhausted, this will pick up that stuff. And this is stuff that we do at Bray and Oakley. You call us, we're going to explain that to you. We go in depth with it. We explain how these policies react, what happens if you have a loss, uh, sublimits, and all this good stuff. A lot of information there. Yeah. So what I'm hearing is if you're a college student in Morgantown and you buy the couch, you need to have a policy or th- you're in your name. <laughs> Hopefully tonight you do. <laughs> Are there any other major differences between um, renting uh, renter's insurance for a home versus an apartment? Uh, well, obviously, the obvious difference will be we're not concerned about the shell of the dwelling for a, a, a renter's policy. We're concerned about the contents and the liability with that. Sure. But uh, that's it. But that's really the biggest difference. It's still... Uh, we consider it to be a home policy, the type of home policy. Yeah, sure yeah. enough. Yeah, you can experience different claims, like I was talking about earlier. Like if you're renting an apartment and you've got, you know, people over top of you or, you know, I get there's some more risk there. Like as a water claims, you've got people going in and out all the time. And anytime you've got a lot of people occupying different spaces, different things can happen. There's some liability exposure there. There's some, you know, potential theft because you don't know who your neighbors are bringing in, who they're bringing sure. out, things like that. Uh, again, one of the number one claims I see when it comes to apartments and, and renters policies are water claims from the neighbor, you know, leaving something on or whatever. And uh, then po- possibly they didn't have renters insurance. So the policy that the uh, tenant has is actually, actually responding. I know it's a mundane question. Some of you guys have answered a couple of times, but um, how, how much insurance, uh, renters insurance, should somebody actually carry this you know, the conversation, and, and, and I deal with a lot of it, the conversation I have with customers is, uh, of all ages, is, you know, first thing I ask them, off the top of your head, what do you think you need, okay? Most policies, most companies we have will do a minimum of 15000 So you have to carry at least $15,000. The typical answer I get there is twenty twenty-five thousand dollars $25,000. So then I'll go into more detail with that. Uh, just like you would on life insurance or homeowner's insurance or auto insurance. And I'll start pointing out things that I know and that I see daily that, 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 you know, they don't do insurance. They don't see claims. They don't cross their minds. So again, I'll start pulling, pointing out, you know, like I said, the toiletries and things like that. And typically we'll end up with a coverage about five to $10,000 more, possibly more than what they actually call for. And again, that's, that's where it comes down to having an experienced agent who does this every day, who can advise you correctly. You know, it's just like if you're sick, you, you, you don't treat yourself, you go to a doctor. They see that stuff. You call yeah. your agent, call one of us. Uh, I'll throw the plug in there, brandoakley.com, us <laughs> On our website, you can call any one of our offices. All of our office locations are listed on our website. One of our agents will help you determine what you need or what we think you need, and we'll kind of come to a solution there together. Uh, again, on the liability insurance side of it, a lot of landlords are requiring certain limits for liability. But again, we all, you know, if they don't require that, we're always going to try to, you know, have that conversation with you. You don't know what you're going to be sued for. You don't know what's going to happen. Sure. So, we, so buy as much as you can afford. Yeah, just take your window unit air conditioner. Yeah. Uh, let's say you're on the third floor of an apartment building and... <laughs> You know, you didn't get it secured in there properly, and it falls out the window and strikes someone. I mean, yeah. could you could you really? I mean, how much is that going to cost? I mean, that's a that's definitely a, a bodily injury that the liability policy would probably have to defend you for. And you know, I mean, was a hundred thousand going to be enough? You know, I mean, probably not. Mm-hmm. Um, so these are things to think about when you're. Um, when you're a tenant or renter, I mean, your, your property is important, but, um, you know, you could pretty much put a, a set limit on your property, but your liability could be unlimited. So I yeah. uh, always encourage everyone to purchase as much as they can. Um, and we usually, you'll hear a disclaimer. Of course, we're not doing a, a specific interview right now, but you'll hear a disclaimer at some point. Uh, we're not attorneys, don't pretend to be any, but here's the insurance part of it. You better protect yourself. And what do you feel comfortable with being protected for current income and future income assets? Where are you in life? Are you near retirement? You know, do you have assets stacked up that people would really go after and attach? Well, that's a problem. So let's talk about that. And that's where what Danny said earlier was wonderful about the 
the umbrella liability to go on top of like an umbrella. That's a big deal on top of your car insurance, on top of your renter's insurance, or really on top of your home as well. And the discounts. I mean, there's discounts for that. Uh, I had this discussion with a doctor today. I'm actually working on his home auto life insurance and everything. And, and, and when I presented to him, I always, I always quote an umbrella always. And I included him in my email and he said, I don't think I need that. I said, why? He said, well, I've got limits on my homeowners and my auto insurance. I said, okay, let me give you a scenario. And I gave him the scenario. And by the time our conversation was done, it wasn't, am I purchasing an umbrella? It's how much of one can I purchase? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, it, it, <laughs> it, it, that's us really just showing you what can happen. You yeah. know, if we do this for yeah. a living, we see it every day. We yeah. see it every day. And often, often we will hear that no one's ever mentioned umbrella to us before. Uh, is that important? And that's, uh, I, I usually point that out. There's a reason we do it. And we are aware of claims and we prepare as if you're going to have a claim. So that's how, that's how we need to prepare. That's the brand Oakley way, if you will. Another commercial. <laughs> uh, the most affordable insurance you can purchase for the most coverage, an umbrella policy. Typically two, 300 bucks for a million dollars of coverage. Hmm. Everyone should have one. Yeah. Everyone on this call has one, except for maybe you. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mike, we need to talk more. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'll have to jot down the number at the end. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I couldn't help but get tickled when Michael talked about the uh, window, you know, because I've ever seen, remember Happy Gilmore, the Adam Sandler movie? The yeah, unit falls yeah. out. <laughs> you know that? I never thought about that, but I will probably use that in my conversation with the renting apartment building. Yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Shoot. Uh, so does is there qualifications? I mean, does everybody qualify for uh, renter's insurance? How does that work? You can't. You, you have to be renting the space you're occupying. Other than that, I mean, of course, 18 years of age, there's got to be some legal stuff there you got to be able to sign your own application you know be on your own to be able to do that and, and so forth but uh no you, you got to be renting that you can't own the building that you're because of course the coverage you would have the homeowners it's got the property cover included with it but you've got to be renting the space that you're occupying awesome okay other than that it's very simple okay it's probably the uh one of the cheapest policies you'll ever buy in your life that gives you probably some of the broadest coverages. Yep. So uh, a renter's policy is pretty important uh, and it's very affordable. So uh, when you start calculating some of the bundled uh, discounts you'll get for having the, like an auto and a renter's together, it helps offset some of the uh, costs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Especially I heard somebody say, just talking about the, the cost of, of, what you know what everything costs now the you know with inflation going up what buildings cost what it costs to rent a place like you talked about you know policies being able to help you if something were to happen you're displaced um gosh how much money you would be out trying to find a, a short term uh, an airbnb or something like that Absolutely. for a month while they Absolutely. remodel your kitchen or bedroom or something shoosh you'd be in for a ton of money so, yes uh, yeah. that, that's all stuff that most people don't think about mike I mean, until it happens yeah until it happens because yeah. you know most people have the the mindset and even myself at times is you know it probably won't happen to me but when it does yeah. that's when your insurance matters that's when what what you find who you purchase it from matters i may have said on one of our previous videos of course i repeat myself often but my age <laughs> 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 that would be it not a week goes by that what someone doesn't call and said claude i never thought this would happen to me well what are they about to <laughs> say it's a claim and that's that's what we prepared for. Yeah. So that is that way with renter's insurance or home insurance, regular home insurance or auto insurance, all of that stuff, things happen. And that's what we do. We prepare for it. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll repeat what Michael uh, tells our customers all the time. We insure you uh, with the mindset that you are going to have a claim. Yes. That's how, that's how we do it in the beginning. And when you when you have a claim with Brand Oakley, you're going to call us and thank us. You're not going to say, why didn't you? And I've had this happen many times. I've had customers call me that's had total losses that have, you know, been weeping because they just lost everything they own. But, you know, we've done the right thing and, and we had these discussions and they were insured properly and, and uh, it's tough, but their life picked up and they was able to move forward. So. Yeah. The, the emotional part, we, we, of course you can't replace that and what they've, what they've lost, but to be able to financially to pick up, 
and also not be waiting for someone else to donate something or waiting for an offering or something, which you're, you're, it's wonderful to see our um, uh, outreach from the community. But it's wonderful also not to have to wait on that and have this protection from from the time that fire department finishes putting out the fire. You know, it's, you know, that's wonderful. Yeah, exactly. So since you guys cover both states for your all's customers, or is there a difference between insurance renters insurance coverage from West Virginia to Kentucky? If there were differences, it'd be very small differences, wouldn't there? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. the, the most difference of the state to state is typically going to apply to your auto insurance. But when it comes to homeowners and uh, renters policies, typically they're pretty much cut and dry. You may see some small stuff like we was talking about the flood insurance earlier and things like that, that some companies may offer in one state, but not the other. But typically you're looking at the, you know, the, the nuts and bolts of the policy, the, the contents coverage the liability exposure, liability coverage. And then each company has their own endorsements like we call bundles. And, and usually there's three to four tiers of that. Starting with the least up to the most, you can just kind of make your package a little more broad by purchasing these things such as firearm sub, sublimits, which we talked about, uh, siding restoration when it comes to homes, roofs and things like that. One of the things that, you know, just going back to having a knowledgeable agent, that actually uh, operates in both states like we do um, is that like with one of our carriers in, in one state, they, um, you know, if you have a renter's policy and you move to a, another location, you don't have to rewrite the policy. You just have to, re, you know, uh, endorse the policy to add a new address. Uh, uh, but however, like in Kentucky, I think you have to rewrite the policy or rewrite, rewrite a new policy. It's not an endorsement. So, you know, it's always really important uh, whenever someone's got a renter's policy and they're deciding that they're going to be moving or going somewhere else, that coverage doesn't automatically follow you to that new location sometimes. Right. Just depending on the carrier, depending on the state. Uh, that's why it's always good to stay in constant contact with your agent. Yeah, and like Michael said, <clears throat> we do have circumstances being in two states, Kentucky and West Virginia, that sometimes we do have Kentucky clients that move to West Virginia or vice versa. And even if we can't transfer the policy internally by changing the address, uh, most of our companies do what's called spinoffs and uh, we can put the previous policy number in and you keep your experience with the customer. It's not like starting over. So if you've been with, let's say Erie for three years and uh, we do that spinoff, you're still gonna have that credit for being with Erie for three years because you're staying with the same carrier, you're just moving states with the same agent. So, so how does, um, if a client calls, reaches out to you guys uh, for information, um, how, how can Bray and Oakley help with renter's insurance? Just give me a um, quick rundown. Man, we the, are- Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Danny. We are insurance professionals and we take pride in what we do. Uh, when you call us, if we don't have the answer, we find it for you. Uh, but more times than not, we're able to advise you on the phone. We can usually answer your questions within five or 10 minutes. We can advise you correctly on, you know, we want to listen to what you have to say first. All right. That's that's the front line. We want to hear what you think you need. And then we're going to start giving our opinion and helping you decide. And uh, we always find a policy that's right for you. That's what we do. That, that goes for all of our offices. We have six offices in two states. Uh, each office is ran independently by the management in that office. It's a face that you know. It's a voice that you know when you call. You don't get a 1-800 number with us to where you're going to call an operator and you're going to talk to someone in Atlanta. When you call our office, you're going to talk to Claude Singleton who you've talked to before. You're going to talk to Michael Winter. You're going to talk to Danny Crum. You're going to talk to Betsy Peoples. And that relationship there, it gives us some experience with you. It allows us to get to know who you are, some of your exposures, what you need, and we can help you make the right decisions. Yeah, I think the emphasis on we can give individual attention and we will do that. We we'll ask specifically what, how it affects you, what you're looking for, and, and then make that advice that we need. So it's individual attention. It's a big deal. Absolutely, it is. Awesome. If somebody's thinking about, um, somebody's thinking about renting, uh, family may be sending a kid off to college. Uh, how do they get a hold of you guys? Who do they call? Uh, best way, honestly, is if, if you're local, you're going to you're going to see our number everywhere. On you're going to see it on social media, Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube, Twitter, and all that. 
but you can always go to go to our website at www.brainoakley.com. Uh, when you get there, you're going to see all of our office locations listed. You can find the one that's closest to you. It's going to have a number there. You can reach out to us. You can, all, you can also reach out to us via social media, Facebook. We monitor it uh, throughout the day. Very easy. If you can't get a hold of us, it's because you didn't try. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, guys, I appreciate you taking some time talking about renter's insurance today. So uh, Thank you, Mike. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully. Hey, I can ask you a question real quick. Sure. Um, how do you pronounce the capital of Kentucky? Is it Louisville or Louisville? <laughs> Is that me? You're asking me? Yeah, yeah. I would say Louisville. I don't know. I think it's Frankfurt. Just saying. <laughs> gotcha. 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 <laughs> hey, one more while we're kind of joking around a bit. <laughs> Somebody famous moved from West Virginia to Kentucky. Do you know what his name is? No. Oscar Sheepway. <laughs> Thank you, West Virginia. We yeah, take that basket. Right. Yeah. It's a great, he's a good, he's a good guy. He's what a, a guy. guy. What a guy. Yeah. yeah. I say go big blue. Great athlete. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, in, in closing statement, uh, uh, WVU will be pit tonight. As always, yeah. I'm not going to leave any more room for conversation. It's great having you all. See you. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> See you. Yeah.